And Black has been very comfortable on this map in the past. Too bad we're not going to see necessarily. It's not over yet in the series, but no Braxis, no nuke, uh, no Warhead Junction, not yet. But uh, but you never know. Maybe Black will, if they win, or also Stream Mix, they, let's, they might have a surprising tactic on that battleground. So let's see. M MVP Black, they've been, for a surprise, they were one of the first teams competitive to pick Medivh into this map. So we'll probably like to see Medivh and also Kilcha's Tracer on this map has been so powerful, just blowing everyone up in all the lanes. Kilcha is kind of the guy right now in terms of when it, what your draft could look like. When you have a, a player like Kilcha as such a large hero pool, could play Falstad to Medivh to Butcher to Tassadar, Tassadar to like to Illidan, then suddenly you have to think about all sorts of different possibilities when you're drafting against a team like that. That's very scary. All right, Black's going to ban the Zarya, which means that Supreme Mixtape could pick Zeratul. They're going to first pick Vala instead, though. And this is going to be, you know, they're hoping that they can build the composition around this. The insta Malfurion variant from Black. They expected and predicted this. And we'll see if Supreme Mixtape is going to commit to Tassadar with this Vala. Definitely not the same type of Tassadar that we saw in the past with the rework. But we've seen it already today, paired with the Vala. Mm -hmm. And Tust has been one of the strongest variants in Korean region right now. He has been keeping on that. His reaction time to that taunt when that false that flew over was so fast. False that couldn't. It even was use almost that. suspicious. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> are you a robot? Just Very quick. Having that perfect teamwork along with the new team from Miracle, I think that's one of his best, best. What's the word? I can't even think of the word right now. Well, just I just want to put this into perspective in general. In HDC's Korean KDAs, Tist and Meridae are two are at the top. Tist at twenty point five, Meridae at twenty point three. The next is Nitrogen at twelve point nine. So the amount that Tist and Meridae have been dominating in this league cannot be overstated in terms of kills to death ratio. As we see, this is not a, a crazy ban um, with the Ariel. The ETC makes sense, and the Taster I was talking about before, they are, are going to pick it up early. And it's not like they've been playing like super safe in the back line, just not trying to die or something. They were in the front line, but able somehow manages to escape the fight just before their death. And that's how that's where the strong player really shows their talent. Not an easy ban here right now for Supreme Mixtape. I personally kind of leaning towards Tychus. Tychus or Li Ming. Um, I'm not as afraid of Li Ming because of Tastar's burst shields. But uh, see, you can see Tastar's win rate is negative. He's very highly picked. 14 picks in total. Many more bans. But uh, he's a reworked Tastar. Now they're going to ban Dahaka instead. So trying to target down Kyocha a little bit here. But you can't really target down Kyocha, and then there's an instant pick on Zero Two and Ragnaros. Black, Black is just taking this draft into their hands. They look, it's their map pick, um, and they have a certain style they want to play on it. But this is the fastest drafting we have seen in a draft in this tournament by Black. Mm -hmm. Not not a, you know between the two together, but Black is so ready for every net ability. They're they've clearly prepared better for the draft dead SMT here and now it's down to the last two picks they need a healer and they need another source of damage I'd say it's likely to be Li Ming and Karazim problem with Karazim of course is his burst can be denied we've already seen Palm denies by Black several in that first game We'll see what Supreme Mixtape has to offer in Tars of Doom. They do not have too much time. I wouldn't even... Look, Rhaegar, I talked about before, Scarlet likes a lot of Rhaegar. Would not even be surprised if they pick it up. Brightwing and Tyrael. Pretty surprised about those ones, though. Uh, so they're going all in Vala, just like Mighty did with Greymane several times. Yeah. Is this going to work? They do have potential global of ETC and Brightwing. And that, to take the early level EXP lead, that is possible. But 
going into a team fight, well, Towers of Doom, it's one of those maps you don't really actually need to team fight at all. If you, unless you, there's one altar, but you can also not fight, but there's just less fights in this battleground, of, co of course. Yeah. I think, oh, we're going to go with Hammer. I was going to say that I, I was pretty under the assumption it was going to be a, a cross between the Leeming and the Tychus here. Um, because Leeming has poke. Uh, Tychus is good against the double tank that we see, like very hefty tank in ETC. Tychus. Sergeant Hammer is basically more about the pushing power. Does have a decent amount of poke as well. Very well protected with this composition. MVP Black looked dominant in game number one. They had a fast draft going into game number two. Can SMT bring it back on Towers of Doom? We're gonna find out. Doesn't seem likely. MVP Black just seems unstoppable right now. Let's go into game number two to see if that continues. In blue, MVP Black, world champions. Sake on Ragnaros, Reset on Sergeant Hammer, Tist on Varian, Kocha on Zeratul, and Merry Day on Malfurion. In red, Supreme Mixtape, Scarlet on Brightwing, Dutu on Vala, Wiz on Tyrael, Judy on ETC, No Chat on Tessadar. The Brightwing pick, it's really, it's got me a little bit worried. Um, yes, they have Tyrael shields. Yes, they have the Tastar shields to keep Fall alive. Um, and it's a strong global hero. But in terms of CC, Polymorph, maybe help you save you against the Zeratul. Maybe help you get the kill against the Zeratul. There's, it, there's just no burst heal. If the shields on cooldown or the Sank is done, can Vala survive against the pressure that she's going to have against Zeratul? The taunt that's going to come out with Varian, Ragnaros, the Molten Core. All of this burst damage that MVP Black has, that it, Brightwing just cannot counter as they get a free pick off from the very, gay, very day. That was getting. a good pick off, and Dudu is also pretty low, but he survives that Scarlet on Brightwing also does worry me a little bit. As you said, there is no burst heal. But if the fight actually goes on for a long time and Dudu somehow manages to escape escape the taunt from Varian and there are, if, <laughs> there, I'm saying so many ifs also too. The Spring Mixtape, they need to really take care of their back line because Zeratul can poke on Bala or Bright, Brightwing and also Tassadar. Yep. Let's see what they have against that Zeratul pick if, if Spring Mixtape actually had that answer against them. It's going to be on no chat to also be the spotter of Zeratul because he does have his Oracle, um, which was also slightly changed. It has a smaller radius now, but doesn't cost mana. It has, a, I think, a 10 second uh, shorter cooldown, if I remember correctly. So he has it more often, but as you can see, the radius is reduced. So he needs to make sure that he uses it wisely and in the correct position to spot where Kyocha is approaching from. I get it just, I want to highlight again, it's how crazy it is to have Kyocha playing Zeratul, as he was a ranged flex for so long, and his hero pool is just absolutely out of this world for him to switch roles like this. It doesn't get much more opposite than all rounder ranged flex to melee assassin. <laughs> and they just trade Brightwing with a uh, altar. Not the worst trade, because Brightwing, if not used, you can you can just teleport right into the fight, right That's into right. the bottom lane. And just they like also that. didn't miss any EXP during this, so. Definitely ends up being pretty solid for SMT. They're down about half a level though. And they lost a lot of ammunition on their towers. Especially in the top lane, I believe it was, where they were missing the majority of that. It's still a fairly close game, as we see it's gonna be a hatred build coming out for Vala. And Tist has been so good just spotting what the enemy team is, is doing, just become Becoming a human warrior, he's actually gonna go all the way in to, to try to get, try to fight for this camp. I think actually he has to give it up, but he's gonna die trying to commit here. Kyocha unable to find anything else here as he was blocked away by the Tyrael. 
Sake, meanwhile, is crushing this top lane, and because he had vision of everything that was happening there, it's not risky for him to be there. He's gonna get them seven first, but uh, Tist with another one of those moves where he's really just bluffing it. And if Supreme Mixtape had been a little bit more nervous there, or to play a little bit more conservatively, they might have given it to him. But a good, good call there by SMT to make sure that uh, they hold on to those sappers, which actually killed the wall mm -hmm. of MP Black. I guess the Brightwing pick actually helped scouting their tool with that pick -boo. But was that enough? I mean, this is true, right? Like, it's definitely, it's definitely helpful. It is very helpful, especially in this... For an older guy like me, like, I have a hard time scouting all the stealth heroes, especially in the, these kind of dark maps, Towers of Doom or Cursed Hollow, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, it's definitely pretty helpful. Does it warrant the pick? Well, we'll see. See another peekaboo go off here. Sees the angle at which Kyocha retreats. It's double altars here. And with the comp that Black has, I feel like they can harass, poke a little bit. If they could just deny one channel. Nope, not gonna happen. Was I think too well blocked. <laughs> SMT is being way too oh, not the opposite of overextending, way too Conservative. Protect, protective for, to their teammates. They're using the Teleport's Pickapoo, and Tassadar just pressing that D all the time, just in case the Zeratul is around them, or also to spot an enemy around them. It's very smart, though. Uh, it gives them a lot of extra security, mm -hmm. and it eliminates uh, unnecessary risky positions. They're actually looking to be very aggressive here. Look at that zoning route by Merry Day just to make sure that no one can get through that choke point as Sake just continues to poke. It's funny that uh, Sake ends up playing Ragnaros here. You and I were talking about, he's like, not really a tank. Like, what is he? He's, we were talking about this in the break. He's like, not really a tank. He's kind of tanky. He's like a but, warrior. But, but like, also a mage in yeah, a way. He pokes. He's like kind of mage. He's like a range. He's almost feels like he's a ranged, like half mage, half tank. So it's, it's not like crazy that Sake plays him. It's definitely not what Sake normally plays, but... Um, if you look at the, I believe in the developer notes, they were trying to make him into a specialist, but they ended up just changing him to a, into an assassin. So I think that's kind of why he, Ragnaros became a hero just like that. He's, he's definitely, he doesn't fit in any class per se, like mm -hmm. directly. Um, like, some people might call him a warrior, some people might call him an assassin. It's just like, well, it's kind of a lot of different things. And in this case, he's kind of winning the top lane versus Wiz and nearly killed a bell tower, which would be really helpful going to the solo altar phase. Unfortunately, unable to get it. Both teams have 10. Supreme Mixtape ahead in terms of uh, core health. And because we're on even talent tiers here, this composition for the time being is working for Supreme Mixtape. And they have the ability to take this altar away from MP Black. They're out positioned right now, unfortunately, though. And that top bell tower looks like it will go down. Look at that drafting coming up from Tist right there. And Dudu very low. And then he does go down. Even stage dive used from Judy just to... That was a little bit too late, I'd say. I, I think Judy was trying to keep, keep Davala alive there. But just a tiny bit late. So MVP Black, not only do they get the pick onto Vala, but also they get the altar channel with the top bell tower, so they get five shots, which will actually put them ahead by just simply the one. They're going to get a second bell tower here, because the lanes were just continually pushed somewhere to the previous set. They have the ability to escort the pumpkin men in the top lane now, while, you know, while threatening that, possibly also getting this mid bell tower. The wall is already gone. And Sake is just going to defend this. They're actually going to commit to this. He has Molten Core, I'm pretty sure. In fact, yes, he does. He uses it right now, just trying to help escort these Pumpkin men while they're taking the mid Bell Tower. We could have three Bell Towers controlled by Black here at eight minutes into the game. G-Club, this is pretty crazy. Like, this is pretty rare. And if they manage to do so, they're going to start getting one shots at a time. <laughs> Maybe never... we're going to see a short game number two. I've never seen anything like this. Like, I've never actually seen three Bell Towers taken this early in a professional match on this map. I have never seen this before. And it looks like it's going to happen. They're going to keep poking Sake as just continuing to protect this Bell Tower. And it seems like Supreme Mixtape, it's, it's, it just doesn't seem like this should be happening. It feels like they should have some sort of solution. They should be able to pick off Sake at least with maybe 
a, a stage dive in, a commitment up there with Scarlet teleporting in. Just has not happened. Here's Judy's teleport down now with the stage dive. Married it with a beautiful ice block to stay alive. And Reset actually managed to get out from the bottom lane. Sake is a bit out of position, but he stinks staying alive. Great Blurry Void Prison to trap all of them. Oh wow. my god, look at that combination with the Twilight Dream. Gyocha's beautiful Void Prison there. And Tiss is going to come in. Dudu is so low, he has to retreat right away. And this is going to be the kills. Spheric Smash kills Vala. And that is going to be six Bell Towers before nine minutes. And we will channel. By the way, this altar will send seven missiles directly to the core. I'm telling you, I've been casting this game for a long time, G Clef. I have never seen anything like this. They're also going for that boss to get plus four onto that core health. I froze up for a second when that perfect BP went up. The sake was literally just out of position at the moment. It was very, it was about to go down if that did not pop up. And it was like the OTK, <laughs> the OTK towers. Like oh, I just kill everything once to get the boss to get both camps, all the bell towers. Just concede. It's like can't even only four kills. What am I watching? MVB Black takes the second Sapper Cap, will attempt for the Escort win here. Who knows what could happen. Yeah, they can actually finish the game here if they manage to get five out of six Sappers in, into the end. Their Sokka is going to pop that Molten Core. Maybe they will actually try to go for it. Okay, looks like they will. So Fury Smash also used here. Three, moving up right now, right into that barrier. Void Prison used. There's the kill on Deterial. His trait here, not going to do too much for Merry Day. That's As the gonna shots be go game. off. There you go. MVP Black. Wow. I mean, wow, 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 wow. Uh, <laughs> look, I mean, look at this team was king of the world for a while. They're looking really strong, currently in second place in our standings for HGC Korea. But, and, and they did like, they had a really. Pretty one-sided game number one, but no Towers of Doom game in Korea has ever been as one-sided as the one we just watched. Six Bell Towers, 858. All the caps on the map taken, also boss, and also with no kills. Like they had four kills in total, I believe, at the before that last fight, which was just kind of like a, I don't know, like epilogue or something. Um, and, and that would that's MVP Black, and that also not putting all their players on their specific roles. I think that that was also in there, but just simply out macroing the entire team, just like game number one, but even more dominant in Towers of Doom. All, oh. all that SMT was able to do was get one altar ahead, but what Sake was able to do during that time and then the subsequent time that followed where he was left in the top lane alone was to basically just bully ETC in lane. Judy was stuck up there. No one ever came to relieve Judy the pressure there. And so I like, I guess I just kill the bell tower eventually. And then he protected it. And that shouldn't have happened, especially after Judy had stage dive. Someone should have been able to at least force Sake out of top lane, not just allowing him to literally walk PVE to the bell tower, protect it. Um, and they just had already kind of playing a little bit off role there on the Ragnaros. Uh, I mean, I don't know what to say, except that SMT is going to have to step it up big time after this commercial break if they want to have any chance. Yep, we're going to have a short commercial break, but Supreme Mixtape, they look like they're almost out of it. It's going to be super hard to ac actually even take off a map against MVP Black. Let's see if they can actually bring back a game after this commercial break.